Hi, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Jerry O'Donnell here with Four Angels Messages. As I implied in the last message that I came up with a couple more Babylon is more than confusion uh, topics, and I'd like to m make a little mini-series. I don't know how long this will be, but we'll intermittently do this, where as it comes to mind, I'll just keep adding and just let you know I'm up to four parts. This one will be part three, and I have another one coming then. Um, now, next Sabbath, I will be in Florida and at Truth Triumphant, and so part four won't be next week. Uh, it'll be the, possibly the week after, unless the Lord impresses me otherwise. But right now, this is called Babylon. is more than just saying there's confusion. This is part three. And um, we're going to focus on, on this third part and see what other aspect we can learn about from people who, well, experienced the physical Babylon because spiritually it applies to us here in, well, spiritual Babylon. Before we get started, though, let's take a moment in prayer. Our Father, thank you so very much for this opportunity to spend in your word. I pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us into truth, that we may understand it. More than just enter into our minds, though, may it enter into our hearts, that as Joseph, we would not sin against thee. We pray that uh, we will see what you would have us to see, and be willing to obey, uh, thus saith the Lord, and become the saints that you need us for this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Speaking of saints, by the way, just want to let you know that that's where we're headed. That this topic was inspired by the reading of none other than Revelation chapter 14. And I'll even tell you the verse ahead of time, which goes against what I usually do. I wait to the very end. And that is verse 12. So the reason why I say that is because we should almost have it memorized if you've been in the Seventh-day Adventist faith for a while. So if you would like to read it from the scriptures, which is absolutely fine and, and highly encouraged, please turn now to Revelation chapter 14. And let's take a look here at verse 12. Revelation chapter 14 reading from verse 12 the bible says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of god and the faith of jesus now in any one of those three pieces we could apply to the life of daniel in which that's what we're going to end up doing and if you want to jump ahead of me um Go to Daniel chapter 2, because that's where we're going to pick up next. But in the meantime, I'm going to explain, number one, Daniel was patient. Number two, he definitely kept the commandments of God. But I'm going to focus on just how much faith he had. And the fact that we read it in Revelation 14, 12, that we need to have the faith of Jesus to be part of the surviving group tells me that we need to know what that experience is like and allow God to develop that in us so that come that day that that statement is to be declared that we would be found just as well Daniel I say it that way because it's not necessarily the experience or the statement right this moment. Basically, what we see coming is that there is a great storm, as Ellen White likes to call it, that is coming, and that storm is Sunday. And that leads to the final decisions being made. And then when we come up to the final person being sealed in the truth, Jesus lays down his scepter. That's an, actually an Ellen White reference, which means since the literal number of 144,000 is what uh, 
Ellen White states happens to be the number, it's not what I used to believe. It is not that the church is sealed of 144,000 and then we go and grab a multitude by preaching the word. No. It is the very end where the living saints, not the ones that are going to be martyred between Sunday and the seven last plagues, but the living saints, the ones that finally make it to the seven last plagues, the 144,000 saints that will not see death, they are going to be translated. When the final one is sealed, the re writing angel reports back to Jesus and Jesus lays down his scepter and then puts on the clothing of vengeance. When he uh, does that, the seven last plagues happen to be pouring out. And we, uh, the earth will be filled with multitudes of people with the mark of the beast. It'll be as if there's not an existing saint on this planet. But yet, it will be able to be declared. And here is the patience of the saints, especially when it comes up to the going through the seven last plagues. Though the saints don't suffer them, they also don't experience pleasantness in life. You're not going to be in your own home anymore. By this time, we will be fleeing for our lives. Uh, finding refuge in the mountains, small little groups. We won't be in the cities uh, at all. Uh, the cities, as soon as Sunday comes in, that's the sign to get out. And if you stay in, uh, I, I don't know what the consequence spiritual, uh, as far as eternally will be. So when the Sunday law comes in, you don't say, uh, uh, okay, let's put the property up for sale. No, you get out. You won't have to worry about whose uh, mortgage you're going to be paying for um, or to the bank or whatever or renters or, or whatever. Just default on it. We're talking we are at the very end of time. And we're supposed to enter into the smaller cities. How we live in the smaller cities, I'm not sure, because then the next step is to make our refuge in the mountains. And so during the seven last plagues, we are going to face Jacob's trials and plead day and night to God. And it's going to be a period of endurance while the rest of the world is exp not every single soul, but in general, in large quantities, they're going to suffer the seven last plagues. And that is when the saints may be trembling and they need a little bit of encouragement to make it through just a little bit longer. Hence, they are given the patience. Here is the patience of the saints, it'll be declared. We might be patiently waiting right now, but there'll be nothing like it during the seven last plagues and say, why hasn't the Lord shown up yet? Even maybe at that moment will be the announcement of the day and hour of when Jesus is, is to arrive. That's another thing of early, early writings, that he announces it, or it is announced, I should say. The declaration of they that keep the commandments of God, which means that we kept the Sabbath right to the very end and did not compromise. And just as Jesus endured the three hours in the garden, the night he was taken to sweat drops of blood, to have that faith that Jesus was experiencing, not my will, but thy will be done, is what the saints would have. See, it's all that intensity that we have yet to experience. The good news is that if, 
for those that quiver a little bit, waver a little bit, that uh, you say, oh, I don't think I could have the fortitude for that. Well, God will have compassion and lay us in the dust. Or we will develop that at that time. You don't have to worry today to have the fortitude. I'm just trying to put the context of that verse into perspective. As we go to Daniel chapter 2 and see someone that had evidently so much faith that when his life was on the line, you're going to see how he reacted. Let's start the story back in Daniel chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Okay, so Daniel chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Verse 2 says, Then the king commanded to call the magicians and astrologers and the sorcerers and Chaldeans for all to show the king his dream. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream. My spirit was troubled to know the dream. I then spake the Chaldeans to the king Syriac, or I'm sorry, then spake, I should say, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. In verse 5, the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your house shall be made a dunghill. So clearly we have a bad dream. Uh, it's tr a troubling dream. And King Nebuchadnezzar wants them to prove, you know, the magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, Chaldeans, to prove their worthiness, that they are really those types of people, as opposed to uh, fakes. Of course, it's all fake because it all comes from the source known as Satan. And so when people are relying on satanic agencies to get answers, they get into trouble. And the trouble, as we see here, is that, well, you personally then become so agitated, don't think straight, and overreact. So if you cannot tell me what I've dreamt, as if mind reading is part of the list of his uh, subjects, you're going to be cut in pieces. That's a bit extreme. A bit hasty upon the king. And I'm not the one that have come to that conclusion. We're going to see somebody else that has identified the, that characteristic. Much like, and this is what I'm building up to, in our world today, there are many things happening around the world and it's all being blamed on a particular new religion if you would it's called climate change and every activity that happens it is blamed for that and in many cases there seems to be hasty decisions being made and so much so is where we find ourselves at this moment in a very serious predicament only to get worse as if it's done on purpose and it has happened quite rapidly it's only been uh, since the year 2000 and we're in 2023 the inflation the gas prices uh, which brought a lot uh, the inflation on by the way the war uh, going through a worldwide uh, pandemic 
um, many, many other things. Um, bank failure. Many signs are showing that things are beginning to break. And to, even though in some cases, certain decisions were not fully, well, certain enactments were done. I'm struggling at the word. I, I hate to say that it was d done on, on purpose, but then th that quite often is uh, an easier description to say it that way. But nonetheless, we are in a breaking point upon this world is the short of it. And now uh, to react to what was brought on, they are making more hasty decisions. And it's not just our country either. They're in unison. Finally, the globalists are all working in unison and more and more are joining this movement to the point that eventually the whole power will be uh, handed over to none other than the Antichrist. That's what we're building up for. Now, continuing on in verse 6, it says, but... If you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. So, a little bribery. Verse 7 says, They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. And the king answered and said, I know certainly that you would would just gain the time because you see the thing is gone from me. Basically, he didn't want them collaborating and say, all right, let's just agree. This is what he dreamed. Let's make up some story and tell it to him and give an interpretation and we can go back to bed. Uh, he didn't want them having that time to collaborate. If they really are who they say they are, they should be able to well, recall his dream. Well, verse 9 says, But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I will show, uh, shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. And the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asked such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And uh, the point that I uh, want to bring out here is that... Um, or for it to consider is that some people have said, why didn't they just make something right up there on the spot? Well, because the bribery now is in place, what you could have is, let's say a Chaldean speaks and says, well, okay, King, you asked for this. This is what you dreamt. And this is the interpretation thereof. There you go. And the King uh, may stand back and say, Hmm. And think about for a moment, and since it doesn't invoke anger right away, another one who is greedy, let's say an astrologer, says, no, 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 king, that's not what you dreamt, he just made it up. This is what you dreamt, and this is the interpretation thereof. That means one is definitely going to die, while the other one gets the reward. Well, who's stopping the magician from st stepping forward and say, wait a second, I want to turn at this. And so none of them want to be caught in the lie. And that is why none of them came forth to say what, what the king dreamt, even if they made it up. Uh, because let's put it this way. When people are on Satan's side, there's no holding back. Not only 
can they be liars and are liars, but they're also greedy or other name a sin. So that's a little interjection there, much like uh, what's being told to us today as far as the state of things. It's all lies. Everything is not good and fine. So now in verse 11, and it is a rare thing uh, that the, the king requireth, and there is none other than can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. So turn to your pagan gods is basically uh, what the answer is. Verse 12 says, for this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. Now, by doing this, realize that Daniel and his friends were captives and they were forced into these classes. And so if the leadership is going to, uh, uh, you know, the highly educated and practicing Chaldeans, astrologers, magicians, and stuff like that are... Um, are going to be killed. So are the students, is the short of it. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. And I already explained why now that Daniel and his fellows, especially Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. So verse 14 says, Then Daniel answered the council and wisdom to Ariok, captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Ariok, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Eric, Ariok made the thing known unto Daniel, and there you have the answer. Daniel's the one that says the king is acting hasty. Hasty decisions are going to be made in the future even now, but hastier ones are going to pl be placed, especially when the plagues are poured out, there's going to be a decree that's going to declare that it's the faithful seventh day Adventists, and I don't mean the denomination either, those that do not give up the Sabbath, those that keep the commandments of God, back to Revelation 14:12 that actually keep the commandments of God, it's going to be decreed that they are the ones that are causing these seven last plagues, and they must be rid upon of from the earth to bring peace between the pagan gods that are allowing this to happen and this earth. So the fact that the earth is falling apart, uh, all these plagues are happening, they think that they can appease their gods, and that points to the fact that um, anyone that tells you that we all serve the same God is a liar. Because no God, even our God, is appeased by human sacrifice as of that, and... Um, yeah, I know the story anti, uh, uh, that just came came to mind, and uh, and now his name just escaped me. Uh, but n nonetheless, uh, that basically Joshua had to deal with, and they put him to death, and then uh, the Israelites. Uh, were able to conquer. That was a blatant sin that was conducted. In the opposite case, no God, so let me clarify the words, no God, our God that is, is not satisfied by sacrificing those that are living in obedience to God, as opposed to the dictates of man. In fact, if you look at it, you got, as we already covered in the first two parts, you have um, Daniel being challenged as far as his diet. 
you had the three Hebrews that refused to, to bow down. Both clearly could end up in death. The three Hebrew boys, as Daniel's friends, were actually to die. They were thrown into the fire. And so they remained faithful, and God rewarded the situation, of course. But God would never be appeased by such. In fact, this is what the persecutions of the Dark Ages were, that this was supposed to not only put fear in the uh, reformers, but they were supposed to, um, well, they were to protect the church at the time. They thought that how they were acting by killing these reformers who troubled the church, that they would then get the blessings from it. And that could have been as far from the truth as, as possible. So, Daniel declares that this is hasty. Why this death decree? It's not necessary. Just like at the very end, when the saints are running for their lives and the rest of the world is saying, they're the ones that's causing these plagues. We got to get rid of them. It's going to be hasty. Uh, now, hasty does not mean immediate. Because remember, it's, there will be a period of anticipation that people are saying, yeah, pretty soon that, that, that decree is going to, that law that we're allowed to kill these Adventists or the Seventh-day Adventists on the spot, uh, sightseeing, kill them. You're allowed to do that, but it's not in effect yet. Let's go do it anyways. Why wait to however long it is until it goes into enforcement time? It's not going to be like it is now, though, where, well, let's have Congress meet and then let's see if the president signs it. And when he signs it, we'll wait. Um, uh, if he agrees to sign it, we'll wait till he actually has a signing ceremony. And that can be weeks or months from now that he'll finally sign that. And it's not that day that he signs it that goes into law, but rather it signs the the date that's on the document is when it takes effect. No, they are going to just rush it through. And it could be a matter of in one week, um, it can be done from they decide that, uh, yeah, they must die and they sign it. And keep in mind, this is not a United States thing. This is going to be a worldwide thing. Uh, that's going to be something that's never done before. A worldwide agreement uh, on that that quickly. Uh, even the pandemic then uh, uh, took a, a long time. Country after country uh, shutting down. It, they all didn't just shut down overnight. Continuing on in Daniel two sixteen, then Daniel went in and desired the king that he he would give him time that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hannah, Mishael, Azariah, his companions. Please note that he did not tell all the Jews about this. They've already proved themselves, or I should say disproved themselves, uh, back in, in chapter 1, where they were just eating anything they want. It was these three lads plus Daniel that were faithful to God, and that's who he trusted. So with that in mind... Why did he share share that? And by the way, it wasn't gossip. In this case, this is a serious matter. So he needed his serious friends. Unlike what many people will say. And this is why uh, I hate to tell you that in our church today, if someone is struggling in a sin, they struggle alone. Because their concern is, of who it's going to be leaked to. They might turn to the pastor and say, hey, I need need help here. And in many cases, I have overheard many of a pastor and said, they didn't keep it to themselves, in other words. And the gossiping begins. 
if someone is close to the pastor, they may not want the pastor to find out. So they turn to somebody else and say, hey, I've been struggling with sin. I need help here. And basically, it does turn into, oh, if you knew what so-and-so, it's gossip. And that's a shame. People cannot find, in God's church even, people that they could turn to and trust to keep it a secret when they are sincerely looking for help. You know, the Bible does say that if you turn to your brother and they help you out of sin, not only are you saving the soul that's in sin, but you might even in the process save your own uh, soul. It's a shame that we can't trust our brothers and sisters in that way. First and foremost, we go to God. But if we have a serious, serious issue and we don't seem, and we keep going day after day and multiple times during the day and can't seem to stop a particular sin. It's such a habit. Uh, you know, people don't stop drinking instant, necessarily instantaneously. Uh, some people are so addicted to, to alcohol that it is a serious struggle and they need some type of physical companion to help them through. That should be an opportunity, but sadly in the church, it's not because in many cases it turns to ammunition to use as gossip. That's a shame. But nonetheless, that's still not the point that I want to make. Why this third part? Well, let's continue on. Verse 18 that they would desire the mercies of God of heaven concerning his, this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19 says, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then D Daniel blessed the God of heaven. I want to pause here. Um, it says night vision. I don't believe that that's the time uh, reference. When Daniel found out the, de the decree being hasty, it could have been during the day. They could have, it could have been at night. But I believe that by saying night vision, basically Daniel received a dream. And how does one receive a dream? They're asleep. That's my point. Finally, in verse 19, we reveal that we should have so much faith of Jesus that after having a period of time of prayer with, in this case, Hannah, Mishael, and Azariah, that Daniel was able to eventually go to sleep. He's going to die the next day. And yet, he went to sleep. How many of us in the... I know there's some serious issues going on in life. Trust me. And it's sometimes it's difficult to rest because it's on your mind. Worry, worry, worry. Planning, planning, planning. But not Daniel. He was able to go to sleep. And in a night vision called a dream, he was able to get the interpretation Evidently, after getting the interpretation, it was so exciting, and, and it happens to me sometimes, not a vision, but rather I'll have a very uh, interesting dream uh, and wake up fr uh, from it through the excitement. I don't know, maybe I'm jogging or something. I have no idea. All I know is that I'm full of energy. And so he gets woken up after this vision is given to him. What does Daniel do? do right away he prays again in thanksgiving for receiving 
the interp uh, receiving um, the dream and even the interpretation thereof, because it's one thing to tell the king, this is what you dreamt, but it's another thing to interpret that. So we continue on in verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, acknowledging what the real source is. Um, so even prophets, never take upon yourself, in other words, that you have this ability. A prophet is only a prophet because God was using that person at that moment to prophesy. Soon as the spirit is gone from them, not that they lose their title of being a prophet, you know, and, uh, I know of two uh, prophecies I think of Jonah, uh, one in the book of Jonah, and then the, an, another one elsewhere. Um, nonetheless, Jonah is no less of a prophet just because he only had a couple uh, visions here. The So once a prophet, always a prophet. But my point is, is that it's not something that you can e just turn on like you have the ability. Oh, I'm going to prophesy tonight. N no. Ellen White went from place to place preaching. Not every church experienced her going off in vision. She was no less of a prophet, though. She still was a full-fledged prophet. Verse 21, And he changes the times and the season. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. I myself am not going to go through the, uh, the actual dream, because that's not the point. We have reached the point. If we are going to have the faith of Jesus in facing serious challenges, we need to be able to be at peace with God. We need to be able to trust in him. Just like the statement of be it known King, we are not going to bow down to this image. And if we burn, we burn. But if God saves us, he saves us. It's in his hands. Therefore, since it is in his hands, all the amount of worry, all the amount of planning is not going to save or change the outcome. It's in God's hands. That doesn't mean we do not give a concern. We do not do a little bit of thoughtfulness and thinking, planning of sorts. But when it comes to going to sleep, it's time to be able to lay it off. In fact, many people that I share this with are jealous in which it is hardly ever a time that I cannot sleep. When my head hits the pillow in less than 10 minutes, if that, I'm out. We should be able to, uh, you know, now, now granted, that doesn't mean that everybody that struggles at sleeping um, don't have, doesn't have faith. Uh, it, you know, some people do lay there and it takes a while for them to get drowsy and, and actually fall asleep. You know, they might be, oh, I'm so tired. I can't wait to get into bed. And by the time they do their nightly routine, Oh no, I'm wide awake. Um, I have multiple flights of stairs in my house and we check on the, on the kids. And yes, uh, my wife, for instance, does suffer from, you know, going through up all the stairways by the time she gets to, to the bedroom. Uh, she might've jogged a mile, uh, might as well have jogged a mile, I should say. 
um, th that's a lot of exercise right before getting into bed. What I'm talking about is when you allow worry and the planning to interrupt your sleep, that is where we do not have the experience of Daniel. Daniel was able to sleep. And there are other examples in the Bible in which I may set aside as a separate message. But if we truly have the faith of Jesus, we should be able to walk like Jesus and put our trust in the Father that his will be done and realize that we are finite human beings, vessels of his, and what will be will be, and we leave it to God. So let us try our best to surrender our worries and control of things. Um, you know, many people have conversation in their head. Uh, you know, uh, I have a presentation to do uh, tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to say this, and this is how they're going to react. And uh, this person might get jealous. And this is how I'll react to them. And I mean, they go to the details, the extreme details of planning out every conversation that is going to happen at tomorrow's meeting. And none of it happens anyways like that. <laughs> um, I've met such people. We need to learn to surrender more to God. That doesn't mean we have no care. A lot of people get confused with that. That's not the same thing. But we should be able to just let it in God's hands. Do what we are to do to prepare properly. But not take it to the point where it's stressing us out. Um, even possibly bringing on a heart attack. A lot of people worry so much they have a stroke and all they were doing was sitting there let us have the faith of Jesus and we could go in many different directions with that thought but I'm going to just leave it in your hands right now to think about Revelation 14 12 that God is fitting us up for his kingdom and one of the characteristics of being fit up, being to be able to dwell with holy beings, is to have full trust, full faith in Jesus. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you so very much for the message you've provided. I pray... It gives us food for thought. May we dwell upon it. And may you guide us from here to know what to do with the information we have received. Transform us, I pray, into the people you need us to be. And guide us all our lives. And may we be a positive light before this dark world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless.